Hi, so this is another comfy video, uh, delving into the mysteries of flux. And so I've made a general purpose workflow, which you can use for most things. You can place subjects and refine and uh, do all sorts of different things. I put them all in one workflow, but I would, um, for using it, probably uh, the uh, select the nodes in um, any section and uh, then make a template. So I say select as a template and uh, I call that place subject. Then if I don't want this um, section, I can, I, can, I can delete it, delete the nodes and then load them back in easily. But uh, uh, when you put this workflow in, you'll have the, the whole kit and caboodle there. So I'm going to start um, on the left and just work across. I'm not going to do any gens. I've got some generations I've made with it at the end. I know everyone likes watching that green line go across, but uh, I, I can't be bothered with that really. So we'll start on the left. This is uh, not connected at the moment, but it's a crop subject. So if you want to put this robot in a scene and what you can do is uh, right click, crop out uh, your robot here. <laughs> I put notes here so uh, you can work out what, you, what how it all works. So you crop out your robot because um, if you do the whole image then uh, it's quite hard to place. So you want to crop quite closely to whatever subject or character you want to um, put into a new background. And then you, you just you just just open it in uh, Mask Editor in the bridge and then just paint over it. And, uh, and that's it, really. So that's very simple. And this will always be connected to uh, this reroute here. If you see, this is the sort of, this is the main input here. <laughs> and then we've got, if we want to place our subject and we have a PNG, this is here, with a transparency, then uh, your, your cutout is already done. So you see this PNG ha has a, a mask, lovely mask already. So if you want to use this module, you would transfer the image and the mask to here, to these two reroutes. And if you want to use this model, then you transfer it from there. And as you see, this is the place subject. And you can rescale your subject here. You can move your subject around using this. And then you'll find that your subject is beautifully placed, ready for doing image to image. So we've got our, our rather fancy refuse truck and we've got our new character and we've got her in position and then we can use that for doing image to image. And that is as simple as that. And that feeds out of that into the input and then it'll go into this next model. Now you could go directly, if you want to do image to image from this, then you just go off directly and just put it straight into the, um, into the VA encode over here. That, that's up to you. So there's the input there. You can so you can either use these modules or not, or you can cut them out of the sequence. As I say, I, I wouldn't have all this lot loaded normally, because <laughs> it, it gets a bit cumbersome. But um, so this module here is the one I've used. It's a sort of streamlined version of the one I've done before, uh, which is to make the image a little bit more comic strippy. So if you see what it's mean, it's taken our our comp composited image with our lady here and what it's done is simplify the image and then put a line around it because I want to make a comic strip in this particular instance. So you see that the whole lot has been unified here. It doesn't have to make a lot of sense because I'm using image to image and image to image in flux is a little bit uh, different to SDXL. I mean you need higher levels so it, it brings difficulties in that you need high levels of denoise so you get quite a lot of change so doing an exact uh, transfer of this image is not really possible in flux because of the levels of denoise required and this again would go straight in as you see here to the image resize this is a general image resize and it takes its sizes from the latent size picker so it'll always so uh, whatever you pick here will happen on this resize as well. This doesn't have to be connected. This is another module, again, uh, focused on uh, producing an image, or a, a, at the end of the day, a latent from which we could do image to image. But this one is um, what I call a smurge, which is actually just making a slightly randomised randomized noise field, essentially. 
uh, from several sources. You can add your sources in here and they'll get joined together with this masking image. So this is a black and white image used for masking. And that will output uh, an image which I find works pretty well for image for image. But of course it's lot, a lot less specific from this. It's for, it's for doing sort of uh, text to image, but you're having just a little bit of input and you can nudge the composition. So if you have this bright area here, you see, uh, it will just nudge the composition uh, in the direction you might want. So here we are. Well, we At this stage, we can either use a latent image, an empty latent, in which case we're doing full-on text to image, or we can use our VA encode latent, in which case we're doing image to image. And you're, you're, I'm, I'm using a multi-line here because it's just easy. And I, if I want to uh, save a, I can just drag off a duplicate and I've got that and then I can edit this one to make it different. And I found that very, I, I actually end up with a huge stack of these all floating around the place. We'll use them again over there and you'll see. Uh, this is the fast grits muter, so you can turn all this, any, anything on and off. And I would generally advise that you start off with everything downstream turned off. So you turn things on as you need them, moving from left to right. Uh, the upcoming models are very simple. This is um, there's a, a few things to note that are unusual and by flux, and very fluxy and annoying in some ways. So this is your first generation uh, that you're going to refine from. And with flux, you have to seed hunt. Uh, there's no way around it. Uh, there'll be a good seed absolutely next door to a bad seed and you, you just have to clip through seeds. So I do, the, I do this uh, at, at a, a medium resolution, 1280 across, 1216 across I am, so not huge. So I, I, it doesn't take too long to do generation and I'm only doing 15 steps. For denoise, obviously if I'm doing uh, a text for image, the denoise is set at one. I'm doing image to image, so it's set higher. At, and really the only usable denoise at this stage in flux is from about 6.5 right up until 90. So quite different from SDXL, where I might, uh, I might be denoising this at 45 or even 35 in SDXL. But flux is a different beast. It's better and worse at the same time. It's better in that the consistent, the um, uh, the image is just of better quality, better hands, uh, better finish to the image, and the images are much more coherent than uh, SDXL. But the disadvantages are that it's a little bit inflexible, and you have to really get in there and push to make unusual and interesting images. It, it, uh, it's, uh, it's quite resistant. <laughs> so once you've clicked through and found your good seed, here's, here's what I feel is, is a decent seed here. And I'm, I'm trying to make a stylized comic strip thing, which uh, Flux doesn't do very happily. It'll do, it'll do photo photographs really easily. And uh, a certain sort of very CGI uh, illustration. But it doesn't really like to do very stylized illustration like comic strips and so on. So to that end, in here, I have Flux 1, as you see, and I've got the compact one, because this is the only one you can use with LoRa's. And then I've got a couple of LoRa's in here, both of them about comic strips and simplification. Uh, one is Ink Punk, which is a brilliant uh, LoRa. I was so pleased to see it arrive in Flux. And the other one is rather good. It's stencil art, uh, which makes flat areas of colour. So as you see, there's not much tonal gradation in there. And... Uh, and, and this one is a very strong Laura. I've got it in at between 20 and 30 usually. And it, it just, Flux tends to want to make uh, the background or the figure or the face into a photograph. And that, that works, I find, very well to fight back against that. It also does this horrible um, depth of field thing where the figure will be focused and everything else will be completely blurred like you put a fisherman's sock over the lens, which I don't like at all. I put notes to cover all of this. And anyone who's seen my workflows before knows that 
I like to do as much as I possibly can on the in-between, between, between uh, the two. And I found generally that a pixel upscale with flux does not work as well as a simple model upscale. I have no idea why this should be so, but it seems to be the case. I get better results. I get uh, less hallucinations in the flat areas when I refine, and I get much crisper details on uh, graphic-y things like the edges, because flux can produce a nasty uh, pixelated edge uh, quite frequently. And I found that the, um, the model upscale prevents that for the most part. <laughs> Not always, obviously. <laughs> well, it's flux we're dealing with here, there you go. Uh, and so I do any colour corrections or alterations. And, you know, if I wanted it black and white, I would do it here. I've taken the saturation. And what I've done here, actually, is I didn't want it quite as contrasty. So I've, uh, I've done a little change to the gamma. So this is a refined stage, and this has got uh, some interesting stuff in it. Denoise, I'm, I do 20 steps, which is fairly, a fair number of steps, and I do, uh, I do about 45 denoise, seems to be pretty good. Um, again, sometimes you have to seat hunt. It's annoying, but with flux, you, you sometimes have to, because you'll sometimes get a, a maverick uh, seed that'll produce, <laughs> produce something, something, something funky you don't want. But for the most part, at Denoise 45, it's, it's relatively well behaved. There's a detailing thing here, created by Matteo, who does uh, IP adapter. And what it does is, uh, is no, add latent, inject latent noise. So it makes the image bigger. Uh, this is so the noise is uh, a finer grain. Adds noise, uh, this is at 1.5, I go up to 2 or 3, and then it shrinks it back down again. So your latent is back to its original size. But what it does, we zoom in a bit. It uh, it refines and adds details, so all the little details, little weedy bits, and and so forth on the tires and so on, uh, and and creases on her jeans, etc. All get just a little bit more detail, and that module there does that job. Okay, onward. So once we've got this image, which is quite nice, but um, her face is not good enough. So we want to be able to refine her face. So the next section is about taking bits of this image and making them better. So what we do, we clip her out with the image crop, which is pretty straight. And we can, we do the size of the crop there and we move the crop around there. And that, that, that's all, you've probably seen that before. It, it's a very simple module. And then that goes into the refiner once again, I use 45 and 20 steps. It seems to work pretty well. We don't add any more detail here. Hopefully you have enough detail by now. And we don't want to change this image, so we want it to carry on fitting in. You might need to rewrite the prompt. If you see on here, there's lots of about a futuristic street and uh, etc. And, uh, uh, and a refuse truck. You could take that out of the prompt. And that will probably give you a cleaner refine here. Once again, you might have to seat hunt. You never know. I usually find, so if it's a 256 chunk, I, I enlarge it four times, up to four times. Uh, if it's 768, I might do three times. So this one I'm doing two times. So it's going up to 1536 to be, and then it, then it shrunk back down again. So it gets refined, and here's, we see the refine. See how the face is all much nicer. And she's got cool, uh, cool shady glasses on and everything is much nicer and all the lining out is, is nice and crisp on her. And then we use this module at the end here, which you don't really need to know anything about. It just drops her back in. You can set the, um, you can set the feathering here. The one I wanted the face in the window on the lorry, so I've, I've reduced the uh, left hand feather. But this will soften the image in. And uh, the higher the noise you have over here, the more likely you are to have to do that. And that's our image composited in. If you want to just do her face more precisely, and you want you don't want any of the any of the stuff around her, which you might want to do if you're doing a higher denoise on her. So the higher denoise might improve her, but it would change all this clutter around her. Then you can paint her in rather than simply crop the air, simply drop the area in. So here, in this module down here, you can in-paint the detail precisely. So you see I've just done a rough mask over her 
and it'll just put the mask's area in and this softens the edge of the mask and as you see she goes in very beautiful so that's just put her in and hasn't put any of the because sometimes when you do that you'll lose the you lose the consistency in the wires crossing the street once you've reached this stage you could reload this image down here at this point and then you will drop that back into here and then you can do the whole again you can crop another bit out and do a different refine so you might be able to refine that tower or make those cars make a little bit more sense or do a fancier uh, refuse truck all that can, can now be done so you get the image from the temp file uh, temp folder bung it in there and you can go around as many times as you want until there's nothing of the original image left so you could refine the whole lot and if you're really mad like me uh, you can then upscale the whole thing two times with the model I find upscale with model works best for this and then you do the whole lot again you can come back and refine the refines until they're refined <laughs> and you can do it again if you want if you're really mad and get up to uh, you know 8,000 pixels across if you want. And that's the lot, I think. I'll put a few examples of what I've done over the past uh, few days. Flux is slightly different from XDR, SDXL. Anyone who's using SDXL, you can, if you chop Flux out of the system here, you can drop an SDXL model in and all will be well. It will work just as well. So I think that's it. I'm not going to do any generations because, uh, as I said, that's a bit tedious, I think. And that's a lot. I hope that's interesting and useful. Thanks for your attention.